It was perhaps as agonizing as any address former U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton ever delivered. I know how disappointed you feel because I feel it too. This is painful and it will be for a long time. In an especially bruising campaign, she labeled her opponent, Donald Trump, unhinged and lacking the temperament to lead the United States. On the morning after her stunning and shocking loss, Clinton veered to the higher road, saying it's time to start healing the great divide among U.S. voters. I still believe in America, and I always will. And if you do, then we must accept this result and then look to the future. Donald Trump is going to be our president. We owe him an open mind and the chance to lead. Clinton's election night campaign headquarters had the feel of a wake. Far from the victory celebration her team had not only expected, but planned on. Early voting was robust, especially among Hispanics, a demographic Clinton thought would help push her over the top. But key states, such as Florida, Michigan, Wisconsin, toppled like dominoes. Instead of celebrating as the first woman U.S. president, Clinton was reduced to urging her most ardent supporters to never give up the fight. And to all the women, and especially the young women, who put their faith in this campaign and in me, I want you to know that nothing has made me prouder than to be your champion. The pain was etched on Clinton's face. For the better part of three decades, she positioned herself to be the U.S. Commander-in-Chief. As First Lady, she worked but failed to overhaul the U.S. health care system. Once leaving the White House, Clinton was elected as a U.S. Senator from New York. As Secretary of State under Barack Obama, she handled the so-called U.S. Asian pivot, taking a hawkish approach toward China and challenging Beijing's human rights record. But Clinton is close to 70, and this election marathon was grueling. This loss hurts, but please never stop believing that fighting for what's right is worth it. This could very well be her final salvo in the world of U.S. politics. Sean Caleb's CCTV in New York.